Okay, close your eyes and watch your breath. Take a couple of good long deep in and out breaths. And notice where you feel the process of breathing in the body. Place your attention there and try to keep it there. So you can observe. Does long breathing feel good? If it doesn't feel good, you can change. You can try shorter breathing, deeper, more shallow, heavier, lighter, faster, slower. Experiment to see what kind of breathing feels best right now. try specific kinds of breathing, or you can simply pose the question in the mind, what kind of breathing would feel good now, and see how the body responds. The more continuous your awareness, the more continuously you are here in the present moment. The more sensitive you'll be to what feels good. When you find a rhythm of breathing that feels good, stick with it. If after a while it doesn't feel good, you can change again. But to notice this, you have to stay right here. We use the breath as an anchor to keep ourselves in the present moment. The mind tends to wander so much into the past or the future. And if you find that it is wandering, just drop whatever the thought is, no matter how important it may seem, or how interesting, or how entertaining. Remind yourself that's not what you need right now. You're trying to develop a skill, the skill of being mindful and alert in the present moment. Why do you want to be here? There are two reasons. One is that there's work to be done in the present moment. Our lives are shaped by our actions. Our actions are shaped by our intentions, by the choices we make. And where and when do we make the choices? We make them right here, right now. So you want to be attentive, alert, right here, right now, to make sure that you're making the right choices. And the second reason is that we don't know how much more time we have to develop these skills. Our time together is limited. The time of our lives, as I say, has no sign to say X number of years, X number of months or days. And the fact that you're young doesn't mean that you have more time left than older people do. It's all very uncertain. But you do know that you have right here, right now. So you want to take advantage of this opportunity right here, right now, to develop as many good qualities in the mind as you can. All the aspects of the practice are developed in the present moment. There's generosity. When you see an opportunity to be generous, act on it. There's a tradition in Thailand. People like to do something especially good on their birthdays. Make a gift to a monastery, make a gift to a, a cause that they like. And the John Fu, my teacher, always used to say, why wait until your birthday to do good? Because your death day may come before your birthday. If there's the intention to be generous, act on it. The same with the precepts. We know that killing is harmful, stealing is harmful, illicit sex, lying, taking intoxicants, all these things are harmful.
And if you know that something is harmful, why keep on doing it? You've got the choice to say, I'm going to stop. This is what taking the precepts is all about. You make the intention that you're going to give up these harmful activities. You make the intention and you act on it right now. Same with the meditation, especially with the meditation. It does involve remembering things from the past and anticipating the results you're going to get in the future, but the work you do is right here, right now. Mindful as to what needs to be done, alert as to whether you're actually doing it, like right now, trying to stay with the breath. Are you really with the breath? Are you really sensitive to the breath? In other words, are you ardent in your practice? These are the three qualities the Buddha said. Go into mindfulness, and then from mindfulness they lead the mind into concentration. You're mindful, i.e. you keep something in mind. In this case, you keep in mind the fact that you're trying to stay with the breath. You're alert to what the breath is doing, and you're alert to whether the mind is with the breath comfortably or not. And then you're ardent in trying to do this well. These three qualities go into meditation. They're, they're based on the practice of generosity and virtue. With generosity, you're mindful of the needs of others. You're alert to an opportunity to help. And you make the effort. With virtue, you've got to keep the precept in mind. You're alert to your behavior is in, in line with the precepts. And if it's not, what do you have to change? You make the effort. With meditation, you're mindful as to where you want to stay. And you keep in mind what you've learned from your meditations in the past as to what works, what doesn't work, what you have to watch out for. What are the signs that you're doing it well? These are the things you can keep in mind. You're alert to what the breath is doing. You're alert to what the mind is doing. And you try to do it well. It's in this way the mind begins to settle down. You put aside your other concerns. You just try to be with the breath in and of itself. But this means you focus on the sensation. As for other concerns of the world outside, you put them aside. As to whether they're going to be good or bad, you don't have to take them up right now. We carry the world around with us so much. both in our minds and in the screens that we carry with us to keep us connected to the world all the time. This time it's good to be able to put the screens away, to put your concerns of the world away, and focus directly on the needs of the mind, because your mind is your most important possession. If the mind is in good shape, then you can be in horrible situations and not suffer. If the mind is in bad shape, you can be in the best situations outside. You still create a lot of suffering for yourself. So the shape of your mind, the state of your mind, should be your top priority, your primary concern. This is one of the reasons why we try to breathe comfortably. This is giving the mind a good place to stay in the present moment. The mind likes pleasure. It 
And John Fuang used to say, if you want to catch hold of the mind, you've got to give it something it likes. He gave an analogy. It's not a pretty analogy. You're saying, if you want to catch eels, if you try to just jump down into the river and catch hold of the eels, they slip out every which way. But if you find something that eels like, you say the eels like dead dogs. So you put a dead dog in a clay jar, put it down in the mud, and the eels will go into the jar of their own accord. The same with the mind. You give it pleasant breathing, and it'll be more and more willing to want to stay in the present moment, to experience that pleasure, to allow that pleasure to fill the body. When the mind has a pleasure like this, it's a harmless pleasure. It's a pleasure that's based on mindfulness and alertness. So it doesn't fog or cloud the mind. When the mind has a sense of well-being like this, then it can stay in the present moment and watch itself. In other words, watch what other activities come up. And be a lot more objective about which ones are worth following and which ones are not. Which ones are skillful, which ones are not. Which ones will lead to long-term well-being, which ones will lead to long-term suffering. As the mind settles in, it can see itself a lot more clearly and become a lot more discerning about where it's causing itself unnecessary suffering. And whatever the activity is that's causing that suffering, it's in a better position to let it go. So this is some of the work we do right now. Put the mind in good shape. Not only so that it can rest in the meditation, but also so it has a good home to stay in as it goes through the day. As you work with the breath, you don't have to be sitting here with your eyes closed. Wherever you are, you can ask yourself, how am I breathing right now? How is the breath energy in the body? Is it in good shape? Breathe a couple of times and you can put it in good shape. And you'll be amazed at the effect that it has on the mind. Calms you down, clears the air. So you're in a better position to see what's skillful and what's not. You have the strength to act on that knowledge. And the sense of well-being that allows you to abandon some of your hungers, because this is one of the big problems in life. We're hungry for pleasure, and if the mind doesn't get pleasure in the right way, it'll look for pleasure in the wrong way. When you're hungry, almost everything looks like good food. But when you're well-fed, this is what feeding the mind with good pleasure does. And you have a good, comfortable place to stay. Then you can see more clearly what's good food, what's not good food for the mind. You can nourish the mind with nothing but good food all the time. You'll benefit, the people around you will benefit. And wherever you are, wherever the present moment is, You can do your work with ease. It's good work. When the mind has a good, solid foundation, it can do it well. Both for your own benefit and for the benefit of everyone around you.